Numbers chapter 12 verse 1. Humility of the Spirit. Humility of the Spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus. I intended to do this because I told people that many a times there are some people who have definitions about humility. Okay? Many of those definitions about humility are so human ideas about that humility in God's things than it is humility in the mind and the spirit of God. What I just want to labor to do is to open your eyes to what is the true definition of the spirit of humility. And in these few minutes that I have, I want to use very wisely to, to, to speak at a more mature place than me. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll begin this one. Let's read Numbers chapter 12 verse 1. The Bible says, And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of an Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And they say, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord had it. Tell me, but the Lord had it. I've shared a, a summary in this line, but today I just want to go a bit deeper, okay? Yeah, that gets me to bad. Now, the man Moses was very meek. Tell your neighbor, the man Moses was very meek. What is the meaning of meek? Um, the Bible says, Above all men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and said unto us, and unto Miriam, Go out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And they said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, who I the Lord will make thine self known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. And they said, But my servant is not so. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful and in all my house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, when, wherefore, then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Weren't you afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Praise the Lord. Let's read in the message version. From the first verse, if you will. But I'm going to read a little bit faster. So somebody will understand where I'm coming from. Miriam and Aaron talked against Moses behind his back because of his Kushite wife. He had married a Kushite woman. They say, Is it only through Moses that God speaks? Does he also, doesn't he also speak through us? God of our hearts, they are talking. <laughs> now the man Moses was a quietly humble man and more so than anyone living on earth. God broke in suddenly on Moses and Aaron and Miriam saying, Come out, you three, to the tent of the meeting. And the three went out. Next line. And God descended in a pillar of a cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and he called Aaron and Miriam to him. When they stepped out, he said, Listen carefully to what I am telling you. If there is a prophet of God among you, I make myself known to him in vision when I speak to him in dreams. That's right. Like, but I don't do that way with my servant Moses. He has the realm in my entire house. I speak to him intimately, in person, in plain talk, without freedom. He ponders the very form of God. That's what I want. So why did you show no reverence or respect in speaking against my son? Against him? Moses pondered the very form of God. He pondered the very form of God. If I then go there, let me first open your eyes to something. As a place of humility. Never speak about any man you must have to God. And I say again. Even if you're also a man of God, never speak about behind the back of a man who you must have there. If what you're speaking seeks to destroy or derail or pervert or stand or break or breach or disappoint or disregard or disrespect, never. Why? Because I told people, what was the mind to say, I shall not touch the Lord of the So was judged by God. Okay? David, by that answer, was already a king. You understand what I'm saying? David, by that reason, already God had judged so. He had judged so. 
God was already looking at David. David was a man after God's own heart. Saul had spoiled every affair of his ministry and life. So when Saul was to his life, one time David creeps behind when Saul was hiding behind someone and then he cut the cloth. And when he cut a bit of cloth to prove to Saul how near he was to kill him, later on that wisdom told David he shouldn't have even cut that cloth. When I'm talking about that touching, he didn't black spend, sorry, he didn't blackmail, he didn't fight against, he didn't speak against, he only cut, David only cut a piece and cloth and he repented. Because he was a man after God's own heart, he knew what the presence was and the price of the presence. Hallelujah. Now, because I'm ministering in this line, I'll explain to you why it's very hard for certain people to grow in their mind. Have you ever realized there are people who dwell in this thing and we lay hands and they scream and cry and fall down and roll, but they never grow in their mind. They can't demonstrate where they've been. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There are people who just by any reason or some reason, they do not grow in their mind. The anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your life ought to be increasing every other day. The power of God in your life must be exemplarily increasing. There must be a third account of you growing in God. Okay? And number one way for you not to grow in God is to be sugar the anointing. And many people have learned a certain deluded thought of humbling themselves in the presence of God but disregarding those that carry the very anointing. Let me tell you, you can never receive an anointing you never respect. Can I say that again? You can never receive an anointing that you never respect. When I was in second year, I also had an anointing. Okay? I also had the power in my own thought and a certain understanding. But Isaiah came to the university. He was a teacher. He was a teacher. Okay? Then he shared. Power of God came upon him. And from that day, I knew that he was the man of God. Okay? And because I knew that he was a man of God, I only know one pattern and life to live up to him. Never to grieve. You understand what I'm saying? And I have to grow. Why? Because I know and have a certain respect of the anointing upon Pastor Isaiah. Do you understand I'm trying to tell you? I'll just take him to be my peer. Because we are both preachers of the gospel. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? I'll just take him to say, okay, I think he's my peer. It's like there are some people probably can look at Pastor Mike and say, but he's younger than me. And by reason of saying, because he's younger than you, you call him Michael. You understand? I'm not saying call him King Julia. No, we're not title people. Try to understand me. We're not title people. Okay? We're not title people. But do you know why the Bible says submit yourselves to one another? To one another. Have you noticed that many of you actually think I take it differently, but seriously, many of you I call you apostles. Do you know I address many of you by title? I hardly address you by name. Why? Because we also must submit ourselves to one another in love. But when you see that that man has done that it has worked, reach him. If you want to go into that anointing. Now leave us. But for us, even if you don't, be already anointed. You can't take it out. Okay? Some of you go in those school ministries, secondary schools, and then you preach. Let me tell you, I've seen a lot of men who can preach and not move the spirit one thing. Who can preach so deep, but not move the spirit one thing. I've seen a lot of men who have not learned the mind of the spirit. Okay? They had a few experiences by the spirit, but they never lost the mind of the spirit. So, their kinds of ministries are occasional. Today God will move, tomorrow he won't move. 
I've seen men who don't even know how the spirit moves that they can criticize the spirit working on a man. Let me tell you something. Some of us, this whole business of getting slain, we didn't wake up and say, let me claim. No. For me, the moment the spirit man told me, I would shake guy's hand, touch people and then they think I know they are falling down and scream with devil coming out of them. It's not something I pre-programmed. If it was pre-programming, then why would a man be slain for one week? What is the mind between a man being slain for one week? There are people you even live here, you think she doesn't want to go back home? Do you understand what I'm saying? She wants to go back home, but there is a power bigger. One time we went somewhere. <laughs> In a certain group of people. Somebody got slain, he left them at church. At a certain church, and somebody stayed watching over them. <laughs> He left that too. Then the person woke up at about two. So the person who was watching over them came up to get them up. They also now got slain. Now the one who was sleeping at six sat up to wait for this one. <laughs> Why ain't in the midst? He had already gone. Praise the Lord Jesus. I could tell you things of the Spirit <laughs> doing things to people that I know for time. I just know for time. For time. They are called time. Hallelujah. But if you ever go in the ministry, for example, you're going to come. The man does not need, we're not talking about four minutes, okay? Don't misunderstand me, because there's a fanaticism that cannot come after that. But there's a place where the true spirit of God can do. Somebody told me it's not in the Bible, I love it. Okay? I'll prove it one day if you like. Because some people don't read. Okay? But anyway, besides that. You got a meeting and then somebody prophesies and then you hear them prophesy to you. From that day, don't ever regard them only as prophets. The reason is why God preserves the men minds, not physical, but minds. There's a difference. There are a lot of people who have an anointing, but it's not minds. They claim it's kakaka, but it's not minds. You understand? Now, there's a difference between speaking, right, from the head that knows and the spirit that has known this thing, but without the affirmations of the spirit, right? Not because the spirit does not hear truth, okay? But because between the truth that is being spoken and from the source where the truth is being spoken, there's a difference. Can I give you an example? Let me give you an example. One time we had a neighbor who beat up the house girl so bad. Then after he beat her up, the woman said, What you've done is not of God. And the man of God quoted the scripture. It was a priest. He said, Even Jesus, when he saw funny things in the house of the father, he used the violence. Now quoting that scripture. Okay? True. The scripture is but it wasn't the truth to beat up a woman. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't a truth to beat up a woman because you quoted the scripture, regardless of what you had done. Do you see where I'm coming from? That's why there are a lot of people who, if you want head knowledge, they have it. If you want him to preach the grace, you can preach. If you want him to preach the spirit, you can preach. But it's one thing to preach something you cannot demonstrate. Or it's one thing to preach somebody that can't validate himself. That is not ministry. That is just the gift. Are you hearing me? But there comes a time where the giftings of God upon your life. Walk with the validations of the Spirit. And those validations of the Spirit only work with men who have had and learned to be humble in spirit. Not physical. There are many people who are proud outside, but they are very humble in spirit. And there are many people who are so humble outside, but they are very proud in spirit. How do you know the present spirit? The presence too. 
Now we're raising ministers here who are not only just going to preach the message, but they're going to preach the message where the Spirit Himself will come up from the word they speak. Are you hearing me? And He will confirm that they are so. That when they speak, somebody will feel light. They will feel light. You understand? That when they speak to somebody for days and months, somebody will say, ever since I started to listen to you, my life changed. There are many people who speak, but they never change life. There are many people who speak, but they never keep the people. And there's a reason. It's those small things. Humility in the spirit. The first place of humility in the spirit is respecting the anointing. But also, respect the anointing. The mantle of men. Or the anointing of men. Because you can't say you love God whom you have not seen. When you don't love who you speak. You can't say you respect God who you don't see. When you don't respect who you see. You don't break principle. That's the principle. By the way, I'm still in, in nursery school because in a few minutes I'm about to go. Primary area university. And then I'll finish from PSB where your brain will be damaged and then we pray. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you're our nature, you realize we will not tell you that there was disrespect, disrespect, we will keep quiet and watch it <laughs> and wait. Not because we don't want to warn you, but there are some people who are teachable. They teach about you know. And they are teachable, you know. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me teach you something, for example. There are people, Pastor Isaiah, can keep you for hours. And there are people who can't keep you. Not because he doesn't love you. But there are people who, in his mind, he knows he can't minister to. Not because he doesn't have their needs. But because they don't see him in that life. You understand? And that happens with every man of God. But watch the people he hangs out with and watch yourself. Watch your life. Over 10 years, you realize that they were better. The same things that you can only study by years. Some of us, by reason of experience in these things, we warn you. But you mature and go. Respect the anointing and men's life. Even if he's not on the pulpit, even if she's just that simple girl who you go with to minister in the equal, the moment you see something extraordinary on her, respect her. Respect her. He is seated here getting camera, but tomorrow he's a pastor in Jesus. You know that? Do you know that? But how many people see him as a pastor? He will tell you. I call him Phil. As I'm coming, Phil. Why? Why do I use the word sir upon his life? Because I know what's upon him. We share the grace of the Spirit. And I must respect him if I respect what's upon him. Do you understand what I'm saying? The biggest place that stumbles Christians is their mouth. Some of you say too much. And many a time some people speak to be exalted and above us, become better than others. And 99% of the words spoken are wrong. 99%. Why? Because he is faithful. They are too just. Never sit in a company where there are few man Even if you, you know, even if you never sit in a company where there are few man I'm advising you, you don't need to take it. Praise the Lord Jesus. If we are not even accusing, who are accusing us? How about you? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Never sit in a company of a woman accused by God. By, if of a woman of God accused. By anybody. That's why the Bible says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the wicked. The counsel of the wicked. The place of wickedness is slander. That's the place of wickedness. Me, I didn't say anything, I was just hearing 
How come you're the one who hears? How come it's not him who hears? You know there are people here who don't know anything about anybody. How come they, they are away from that country? The Bible says, Blessed is the man, let me say it to you, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standeth in the way of sinners, not sitteth in the seat of the scornful. If you sit next to a man scorning and anointing, don't sit there. Do you understand the wisdom? You don't get it. If you sit between two people and two men start to talk about Apostle Michael, whether right or wrong, walk away. Be wise to walk away. Because if you sit in the seat of the scornful, this spirit is seeking to consume you. And long before you know it, you are worse than the person who stayed it first. Because you judge as well matters. And you are worse. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If something has not come to you first hand by your eyes and ears, first hand, don't ever be a second and third witness to it. This is advice. Okay? You know I'm saying this? Because some of you are growing up. And you'll understand. I'll give you an example. If you and Pastor Isaiah start here to talk the things you know. <laughs> oh, you'll be surprised. We know too much. But I don't even sit in the car with Pastor Zach and tell him so and so did he. Even Pastor Zach, he doesn't hear from me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If Pastor Isaiah prayed for a lame man, I would make sure Pastor Zach knows. But if I had the Pastor Isaiah soul, I would make sure Pastor Zach does me. Me, that's me. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Me that? Me. Because I'm submitted, okay? Now, I'm not seeking to scare you. I'm only seeking to grow you. But it's another thing if you sit in the seat of the scorn. I mean, if you... If you sit where the scorners are. Then you say, I'm here, I wasn't talking, I was just listening. That's why I ask Christian, is it by mistake that that a room upon you. Where did it find you? In the presence? Were you sick in the presence of God and a room came? Many of you who submit to me, or pastor, I you know, I call you personal. And the closest you are to me, the more I call you. I've scolded Michael many times until he cries. Then after that, I tell him yes. Why? Because I too much from you. But my scolding with Michael, I was Michael. And after scolding tonight, tomorrow morning, I tell him, Gendo, over here. That's my view, that's my You understand? The closest people to me have scolded the most. Also, hey, my Lord. I have rebuked him very openly. You can wait for what? You understand? Many went. Well, that was it, okay? But at the end of the day, Michael can't know what I say to Emma. Me and Emma are different. Because my business with Michael and my business with Emma are two different businesses. Okay? They can't be mixed together. Do you understand? That's why again I ask you, did the rumor find you in the presence? Were you in the presence of God? Where the Spirit of God was? And then somebody said to say, can you believe it? No. Simple thought. Why didn't the prophet find you? Why didn't Trema find you? Why didn't Revelation find you? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't attack the wrong spirit. Tell anybody don't attack the wrong spirit. Okay? So in our days of ignorance, we knew how to get along around certain people. 
I'll give you an example. One time I told people, you can't talk about me and I don't know, and it's a thief. It's a thief. I'm not scared, it's a thief. Some of you have tried it, you know. It's a thief. God knows that. Okay? There are these men who went and said, Oh, grace, good to you, grace, grace, because... Uh, I said, Lord, I thank you. Okay? In vision, I'm on my bed, I see a man say something. I say, are you sure? Yes. You keep quiet. And I've never openly said these men do. You okay? Okay? One of the main critics of the ministry is personal assistant with the ministry and care. I told me I've come to confess how they used to send me. You see, I didn't call the guy. I didn't even want him to. I didn't ask for anything from him, but somehow the Lord will that I know. Do you understand what I'm saying? But even with his witness, I told him, oh, okay. I left that down. Some of the things he said I knew were true. Some most of them. You know what I'm saying? But because he's the Lord's anointed, I left it at that. But I could have destroyed him by what I have. It was enough. Trust me, it was enough. Are you hearing? It was what? It was enough to destroy him. But now we can't have kind of battles. Cut my head, even now it goes to these people. You say, you come and then you get witnesses and they sit in front of TV like some men do. And then they start to say, tell us what you Then they you start fighting. You, do you see that kind of motion? Praise the Lord. Some of you are lawyers. When you get to issues that are spiritual, okay? And God has not told you anything about the case. Leave it. Leave it. Why? Because your interests are obvious. They are your brethren in the Lord. They are your brethren in the what? In the Lord. Because you see, this is how men will know we are the disciples. The Bible says, because we love. There's a difference between being a church Christian and a disciple of God. This is how men know we are disciples, because we love. There is something love can't be. It can't seek to reproduce another record of what it has had and not yet proved. That is not love. Love covers the multitude. Okay? It is too hard for you to walk away. I mean, don't sit in the council where you find men scorn on anybody you regard with an anointing. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will go. I promise you, you will go. I promise you, you will go. Trust the many people. Some people, it's not devil, it's not over prayer, it's just small things. The Bible says in the book of Solomon, the small foxes that spoil the vine. They're not big foxes, they're small foxes. Small things destroy. The things that destroy salvation and life of a Christian are very small things, they're not very big. There's right now somebody who has failed to get killed because they refuse to forgive. Up to today, you failed to get killed. The day you ever let go of that person, I promise you will be here. That you think it's devils, you're over praying and trust you're going to prayer mountain, forgive your mother, forgive your father. Forgive that guy who hurt you so bad. It's the small things that is not. Hallelujah. 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 So anyhow, before I go deeper, you can never walk in an anointing you don't respect. Never. Is that the way in that? That's why the same people we can't lay hands on. Not because we don't want to. And we don't need to lay hands on it, so to speak. But the same people we just can't lay hands on. Not because we don't want to. Not because we must not. Not because we are not. You understand? But the same people we just can't lay hands on. Because it's easier. Whether you lay or you don't lay, it's easier. Do you understand what I'm saying? We don't lay hands happily. The Bible tells us. Don't just go laying hands on everybody. You don't lay hands on everybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? Neither should everybody lay hands on you. Go to I tell you now, I'm one woman, I have to take it, I take it, I will not take it, I will not take it. Some of you, you have stocked mixtures of sin in the spiritual imbalance. But in the flesh you're cutting. Name spiritual imbalance. 
haleluya haleluya if I if we pass by you for one year and you make a certain confession it's enough to know that somebody laid hands on you listen if we can't teach you the word for one year and you say certain words there are certain words you can't say but when those words come out that near is going to come in I don't know where you picked it from, but you picked it in one of those conferences of breakthrough. <laughs> I'll give you an example. You can't be in this ministry for one year and go to another place. Eh? Are you hearing me? Okay, I'm just giving you an example. One year, you can't be one year here. And how about those radical religion things? You can't. After that one year list you have those funny things, those funny spirits you intentionally yield to, like gossip. You know, over wound over those those were simple ones. But by the time people see you throwing tantrum and you <laughs> and then you go for a certain delivering service and then you throw a metal and you are under us for one year. Ha ha ha! Ah my somesta. I never knew you. <laughs> Hallelujah! It can't be. Tell your neighbor it can't be. That's why I told people. If you ever enter this ministry and spend three months in this ministry and go and feel like you have not added on anything in your life. Please. Don't even say bye. Don't talk about the gamble in the news. No. Again, the parable. Go. Because that means we never did anything in your life. Do you get where I'm coming from? It is impossible. Unless you just an occasional visitor. Go go and move it away. Go over the land of the city. Because you're going to come. 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 But when you get out of the cancer class, there are people who say, I am religiously attending service. You can't attend service for three months consecutively and live with me. You can't. It's just a book. I'm not speaking proudly. No. I speak because I know. Even deeper than believing, I know. Because everyone can go back and testify and say, I learned to do this. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So Aaron and Moses, uh, sorry, Aaron and Miriam, see Moses marrying a Kushite woman because there was a particular law that they should marry from their own tribe and their own people. You understand? Remember from the fathers of the faith, the Abrahams and everyone. They were married from their own people. Everyone was married from their own people. Now certain people looked at the experiences of the set rules and patterns to think that that was the only way and God would direct. Listen, God can change patterns in love. And this was an idea of Jesus. Moses saw a Kushai and he landed. Whether he should marry from his own or not, he saw a Kushai and he landed. Period. God said it's okay. Mark. Now Aaron and Miriam are saying, no. God not for you get enough for your gum come again and nothing come again. You understand? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord calls them out of the tent of meeting. He stands at the door of the tent and asks them, and you are afraid. By the time God asks you and you are afraid, it means he's even shocked you and not. <laughs> listen. Listen, aren't you afraid to sit in a conversation that engages, involves Pastor Isaiah? Aren't you afraid? You just speak blatantly. You speak. Papa, you, you, someone say Papa, and then they start conversation about your Papa. And you're not even afraid to sit. You just sit and listen. You, you're not afraid. You're not afraid. Now, people are laughing at Aaron and Miriam, but they are what? Because they are New Testament creatures. The other ones were doing it in a soulish realm. And Miriam being the older girl, probably she did it by reason of being a weak soul. Tim. 
But now you are not with so female. In Christ they say that men of you, your spirit, with you, you mature than solid realm. It's true that majority of the women can't keep quiet. But when you got born again, you left that class. <laughs> you left it. Nobody can stereotype you anymore. It's like people say, all men cheat, yes. But when we got born again, your husband doesn't cheat. Do you understand? You can't stereotype. Do you understand? You can't stereotype. So, there are people we can trust. They are women, but we don't regard them as women. And the people I have seen in spirit, they are not women. In spirit, they are mature men in the spirit. <laughs> Do you understand? But there are some who have stayed dead. It's inexcusable. And it's what is a man. I tell that one again, it's even worse. I tell that one again, it's even worse. I know what's that. I'm a fool to my cousin. Do you understand where I'm coming from? There are certain things we see that are not our business. For me, even at my workplace, I see girls quarrel, and then I realize where it's coming from. I come out of their mess, and I see you in the room. And then I know, hey, 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 you know, first, men quarrel from me. Do you agree? They quarrel from? Why didn't you greet me? That's from there. End of story. To be mad, I've vented out my frustration. My issue is the ego. I felt abused. That's it. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. But that's not how women think. She can't say why do she do this. No. She, she will say seven times now. <laughs> <laughs> you have not been. You, know, you even kept count. <laughs> Ogo kubiri na kubala, ogo kusatu na kubala, ogo kuna na kubala. Yaku sioni wana e ya kubala. In her heart, am I lying? Some are even distinctive with dates. Twelve October. Opium. Do you remember? I swear men don't keep those things. We don't remember for a... We don't. We don't. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, let bygones be bygones. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So I refuse to stereotype you. It's like I can come, I'll give you an example. I can be at church and then somebody, and then I see a certain church member say something about another. And I'm shocked and say, really? Why did she say this? Okay? I won't come to you directly and tell you, Lydia, why did you talk about Henry? No, no. Because I realize I'm dealing with a demon on me. I'm not dealing with you, I'm dealing with a demon on you. That's more serious. I'll first go to the presence of God. God, what's wrong with the scripture? And for some, he tells you this one is mature. The mature one, I know was a mistake. And anything that is a mistake can be corrected. I go by scripture to correct it. Then I will speak to God, and then God tells me, no, this one, it's not a place of mistake. This one is a place of she yields to the spirit and she loves you. That one, unless they stop loving you, even if you correct, you can only break. You don't waste your time. So that silence would mean you're even keeping them by comfort. Because you can do something like somebody, now take them to us. You understand? Now look at So you, yeah. Some, some, and somebody even black and says, eh, did I ever say it? But you remember in your head, you say it. Now, I'm putting more devils on you. Come on, I'm going to put it in this stuff. 
Lord. Now, if it's your that weak kind, I leave you. I say, ask God to go with Gambo. Memo Kong, get up from life. You can't pass the road of the Philistine. It's a shortcut, but you'll feel war and pain. So I make you run the longer run. I wait for you after your 40 days of dryness. Until one day when the opportune moment is very clear, you have enough to meet it. I talk to you. And you restore. You still refuse. I let you go your 40 days. But you're wasting time. Hallelujah. That's why if you have ever spoken about a man or woman of God, take one second, five seconds from now and repent. Tell oh God, I will not repent. So, if you can't go to that man and woman and tell them I am sorry, don't tell them what you say, they might hang you. But tell them, just tell them I am sorry, they will understand. And if they are mature, they must forgive you. Now the Lord comes to Miriam and tells them, well, when I speak to my guys, anybody is perfect. I come by two realms, visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. But that's not how I speak to Moses. That means there is a place of humility. Yeah? That something a man here is beyond a vision and dream. You understand what I'm saying? He says, when I speak to them, I speak, I, when I speak to prophets, I speak to them vision and dreams. But when I'm speaking to my servant, Moses, I don't speak to him that way. He has the run on my entire house. He has the run on my entire house. I can give an example of probably me and Pastor Isaiah. When Pastor Isaiah is speaking to me, he can't speak to me like anybody in this building. He can't. He can't. When he's speaking to me, he tells me everything. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I have to earn a trust for him to talk to me about everything. And that was a place of humility. Do you know that? There is nothing Pastor Isaiah can't tell me. And I'm telling you that he knows that I know him. Like he knows me. Do you understand? If there is anything, I have access to anything about it. Why? Because there is a way I see him and there is a way he has grown to understand how I see him. There are things you can't tell anybody in the world but you will tell me. That's why some of you, if you notice, you say, oh, he tells it. Then the one thing, go and take the second one. It doesn't mean he can't finish it. No, no, no. No, he's more mature than I. He has been in the spirit longer than I. He knows more than I. Do you understand? Do you understand? But there's a place of anger in heart. And not everybody's there. Do you get what I'm trying to tell you? Because that kind of submission, that kind of submission, submits plan. That is why you women, when you get married, you will see, the more humble you are, the more the man will submit his plans, like he's not the head of the house. Small thing. Do you want to tell a humble woman? That's the woman who will go to her husband and tell him, what do you want us to do? And the man will say, you what do you want to do? That's a humble woman. Right from, let's go for a meal, where? You choose, no, you choose. The moment you see that, you understand? By the time the head takes authority to give you the audacity to choose, it, it just to you to a certain level. For women who can't be trusted, you must decide, decide everything about her because you can't trust any of her decisions. No, sorry, we could have to tell me that motoka. No, I'm talking about me. I tell you one day you'll get married. I speak as an apostle. Praise the Lord Jesus. Soon I'm bringing a sermon on the angels of the woman. You wait, it's coming. I, because the Bible says she ought to have power on her head for the sake of the angels. There is certain ministry that can't work with you if you're an unsubmitted woman. They can't, even if you pray 
and first, the results on you show. If you have money, you won't have peace. If you have peace, you won't bless. There will always be something missing about you. All right. Listen, for example, they're going. The Bible, <laughs> listen, the Bible is very clear. Listen, the Bible is very clear on how to run marriage, okay? That is just because you follow the terms of the Bible, okay? If you're not going to follow the terms of the Bible, follow your other terms, okay? Follow your other terms. But if you're going to follow the terms of the Bible, do you know? Like Paul says, women ought to keep silent. Hmm? You remember that? Now, then that to No, he's not saying that. He's not saying that. He's not saying that. That's why that particular point, if you read the scripture very well, he's not talking to unmarried people. He's talking to married people. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll prove that. Let's read. Let your women keep silent. Let your women. Who's women? Okay. Probably. Keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under, under, as also says, next line. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their... You see, he's not talking about unmarried. He's talking about wife. It's not a place of saying that your wife won't be a priest. No, 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 no. That is out of the world. Come on, we're not preaching that. We're saying, I'll give you a simple wisdom. I think this is, we're in a car for example. Okay? I'm driving. Okay? Pastor Isaiah is seated with his wife. And then Pastor Isaiah makes a statement by reason of it. And then Mama Deborah says, No, 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 that's the point. The point at that point is no longer whether Pastor Isaiah said say something wrong. You should have known he was giving a church statement. And at that particular point he's saying any existence of anybody outside the two of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? If she disagrees with him, let him say his statement. Let me get out of the car when there are things she says. In humility, let's begin from there. Biblically, she kept silent when he spoke. Are you hearing me? But when there were two, she took the place and said, Sir, I don't think this is right. I think this is how it's supposed to be. And then he says, No. At that particular point, understand, he's still your cover. Right? If you're going to get married to that kind of man, tell him, I will support you. If you still insist, let go now. I will support you, let go now. If it's big, I will. You remember Jesus? You understand? If it's possible, take this cup of suffering off you. But if it be, I will. Sarah knew that. Get rid of Hagar. You don't remember. He didn't get Hagar here. The housemate, everyone. Then she... <laughs> No. Scriptures are clear. She left everyone away. Then she went to get rid of the slave woman and the child. Abraham had said, No. Sarah, your mother. How you? Your mother. Now there's a thick thing called she Now you're gonna consume one away in God. In Samba. Nan Samba. Morning, I'm sorry. It's morning, I'm sorry. 
You understand that okay? Come, I will tell you the truth. And it does not, it does not. Come, she won't say it that way, but she will speak to make sure even the maid knows. You said the maid in the car, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are then a time and I'm from the maid is recording, are you hearing me? Then you go through your children. Oh man, the tech girl, hell of tech. Hey, 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 Listen, you're not married to that maid. You're not even married to your kids. Are you hearing me? They will go, you still stay with Mr. Black. You understand? <laughs> so you better not listen. When you're under power, watch your mouth. The essence of submission is a, a wise mouth. That is that nothing now. The submitted spirit knows how it should speak. When it fails, the candle in the night, the Bible says, for her candle does not burn out in the night. Sarah knows she can fix it by night. She goes to God and tells him, I didn't break the rank. I didn't break the rank. God leaves his place and comes by reason of a woman who didn't break the rank. And then he goes to the man who he knows clearly submits to him. He tells him, listen to your wife. That was it. That was it. If Pirate's wife was not as submitted, she would not have told Pirate. And Pirate listened to said Jesus. He can't be. This way I'm coming from. For the sake of no, I have come. For the sake of the what? The angels that cover you. The Bible says the woman ought to have power on her head. She, whether for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels, nothing else because of the angels. Because if you believe in angels that minister to you financially as a woman, as a lady, and the anything that represents you, those ones that have to see you childbearing, those ones that see you pregnant, those ones that take you to, to save you from accident, those ones that save, save you from slander, those ones that save you from being fun and going old before time, listen, have power on your head. Know who you report to. He might be wrong, but he's your husband. Are you hearing me? Support him. Let him hit the rock. Trust me. If he has made the mistake, but he remembers the wife supported. The next time he will ask. And by the time a man asks you what should I do, know you're submitted. But by the time your man tells you what he wants you to do, there is a point where you feel. You never know where, but there is a point where you feel. But then you find born again Christian in a car, husband and wife. No! Who, who is married to who? Who is the husband? One of you must be the husband. Listen, you will not both be. Okay, gender balance. Marry according to the terms of the Bible. But if you marry to the terms of the world and still think God will intervene, listen, angels are pitched up already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That gentle and meek spirit, the Bible says, which in the eyes of God is, Christ. Gentle and meek, not nice, no, not body, no. Gentle and meek, not nice English and a good family lineage, no. Gentle and meek, not whether she has flu or time says, no. Gentle and meek, which in the eyes of God is rightly. For the women of old endow themselves this way. If you want, listen, this is the oldest way women keep it. Even as Sarah addressed her husband as my lord, not no, not Michael, not Isaiah, not Swim. No, 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 no. Okay, if you want to add on, put that in master, but it's your master. If you don't want, it's okay. 
if you don't want to what? It's okay, that's your problem. Your fellow women will cook. You're going to grow older in that cut. It will kill you. Every time they do ton, 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 it will kill you. I told you. He's, listen. He's your master. He kills it. If you don't want, go to God and tell him, make me a celebrate. There is no way. There is no way. There is no way. A guy can just come and talk to listen. Your ma <laughs> You see what I'm trying to tell you? Your your ma listen. Okay, it might be hard, but that's the truth. Okay, look at Jesus and us. Isn't he our master? Isn't he our master? But look at the man who is submitted to God and the Spirit. Every time he wants the Spirit to move. Because the faith you have toward God, to the levels of your submission to His word, that's the place of humility, okay? It's how now He responds to be moved to a place where even if He will it, no, for your own sake He will move. That is why certain people can move the Spirit anytime and send to cast. When Plutus goes what Spodley tells you, if the Spirit doesn't move, I move Him. Do you know where He came from? That is the most humble statement in the world. When you find a woman who can tell you, if my husband has refused Mundekere, he will allow that to be me. Because she can, she can change him anytime, anywhere. She goes to him as her master. Are you seeking for him to hear out? Look, look at it. And the other opposite thing, because Vashti, the indifferent thing. Vashti, I've made a party. I've also made a party. I'm talking to you guys, you Simanya, you're in the heart of Christ. Simanya, you're, you're husband. Simanya, in what? Simanya. A successor makes the path, but she also makes her own path. How can two married people go in two different ministries? How? My husband? Praise from what? Tell, tell, tell. Me, I pray from hell. Listen, we can get somebody to replace your chair or pray him here. But be with your master. She's evil who will meet you, but be with your master. Why am I on now? When you are getting married, you knew that he was from a different church. Go with him! Go with him. You make that decision. Alone. That is why the same people who are clear don't want to attack Simosa. Not because they don't want to marry outside, but because they don't want to get to a point where they are conflicting their feet. Great law, great law, great. How do you sit in a car to a legal church when you've been raised in the grave? Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. The moment you get the guy, find out if he's legal. If he's legal, I swear it won't work. I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. If you love him so much, why are him great? Yeah. Because great and low can't be married. You will quarrel from first death to second death. You won't understand each other at night. You don't know why he doesn't understand you. He also doesn't know why he doesn't understand, but sometimes you seem like you're stubborn and arrogant. How can you rebuke him? <laughs> but it's, the thing is simple. These are two seeds trying to create one seed. Chisoboka. That's why you be careful who you marry. Are you hearing me? I know the man who was given a job in Kenya. The family was in South Africa. The wife told him I'm not living in South Africa. Where the head goes, the body goes. It will be easy. Because if he goes with the head and the body stays, trust me, he will need the body. I'm not supporting. Don't get me wrong. I said he will need. I just said he will need. I don't know how mature he will understand what I mean, but I said he will need a body. Body better go with the head. 
It's like going where Christ is. Oh. Again, they don't go to that direction. It cannot happen. It can't. This is where I'm coming from. Now, verse 2 is being a pastor. Verse 2 is being a pastor. Verse 2 is being a pastor. Husband is doing what? 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 Listen. Listen. When that kind of woman understands this concept, when you hear your husband pray, open your mouth. Even if you don't feel like it, fake it and just suck it up. But fake it. If you say, I'm going to Arua tomorrow, go to God and say, God, if you need to be possible. <laughs> then after, clean your eyes and tell him, what time are we leaving? <laughs> My Lord. My Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Your husband is not your father. The two of you are one. What I'm saying in Nambari, pack your, you, you say for better for what? Are you hearing me? You, you said it at that altar. You, you are the one who's hitting you are. Listen, you know, Warimukuru, Warimukuru, Warimukuru. When you make that decision and say, I'm ready to marry a pastor, the other young girl was bringing me nothing. He's a pastor. He has always out. I asked her, what did you marry? You, listen, if you want bankers who don't pray, doctors who are born again, they are there. They are there. Deep anointed businessmen. But the moment you marry a man or girl, believe me, tomorrow they'll call him to Sweden. At six, shut up, pack his bags. <laughs> Then they started to stay. Ulira. Some men, they leave their wife and then they go to ministry. Listen, listen. Don't marry a preacher. He will leave you and go to ministry. Why? Because he married ministry before you. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Listen, I'll give you an example. Some of you are still not even dating anything. The Gapitas are going to come later. You are in love with Jesus. Listen, you understand? The days when you didn't have transport, you came to Mukono walking in love with Jesus. You understand? The days when nobody said anything to you with your fake hair, you are in love with Jesus. That torn back, you are in love with Jesus. That funny hair style, those shoes, those smelly dresses, those socks you borrowed, you are in love with Jesus. Now, God comes before even your kawaii. Your husband. I don't know that you understand what I'm trying to tell you. That is why I'm saying, I'm sorry, heart of Christ, if you're this, I'm sorry. But if your heart of Christ, when he's taking you, be clear. Will you refuse me to pray? Why? Because prayer got me here. You did get me here. Prayer got me here. Will you refuse me to pray? The moment you say, I uh, will start, my brother, no nyabu, no nya class, that's class. There are many, there are many who, who are free with praying anywhere, anyhow. Are you hearing me? But if you will refuse, be very clear. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So the man put the dinner. Man, a party. But she also does what? Does a party. You understand? She. Remember, the Bible says, when you made a party, he called her out to see her. But was she did actually see that. She felt like she had her own party. But that's what he He's trying to prove your people. The thing is, this is taking your job. Huh? 
Das Wort. Ich, ich, mein Lord, it is pleasing you. Let me throw you. Fester, fester, Skripa. Did you see how she addressed the key? My Lord, if you find it pleasing in your heart, it is now come. Wash Esther, and you pick a wash. That's why I want some men. I mean, if if you if the woman is busted from day one, don't waste your time. In marriage, it will be worse. Oh. I don't want to know why even I'm speaking this thing. Is somebody going to get married? Listen, if Vashti is the way she is, listen, I know, I know he knew her. I just know he knew her. But he went after her. I just know. He knew Vashti. I knew. That's why when he brings her out, he could only stop this nothing else. He didn't tell her, come and give a speech. She didn't have the brain. Tell your neighbor, don't marry beauty. No. No. Marry the anointing. That's all she was. But Esther was more than this. Three days of fasting. <laughs> Do you see where I'm coming from? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I, I look at some church people who say, I'm dating this guy, but ah, the things of God is very far. I look at them and I'm thinking, your hair is very far. <laughs> he, he, okay, he loves God, he tries. <laughs> if you're here and you're a man, grow. I'm telling you, if you're going to marry any woman from heart of Christ, Better be deep. Read your Bible. Fake prayer. Fake fasting. But please be deep. Please. Why? Because you're the head. Nothing else. You're the head. You're the head. If, if you're not gifted to preach like she's a preacher, be mature enough by the Spirit to support her. Two ways. But you can't be indifferently immature. You can't bring a immature guy. Immature sir, when you're coming to... Look, I'm sorry, Elijah, they brought you here. I'm sorry. I didn't intend it. I didn't intend it. If you want to marry her, that grow with progress. See Pastor Isaiah, tell him how can I grow. Me don't see me. See Pastor Isaiah. He's a married one. I'm telling you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, Esther doesn't come into this. Praise the Lord Jesus. Esther has not shown her people. No, the king did. No, Mordecai. Let's go let's to this. I'm going to show you some. And Mordecai walked up the and what was. Uh -huh. Now one of the main things can be the thing that they have after she has to let you get that. I'm looking at that part where, where Haman blocks the king Mordecai. Right? And then Esther goes to the king to speak to the king, asking him for a time. Right? And then the king just, he told her, even if you want up to half of my king, I shall do. He wasn't mad. He was really telling the submitted woman. Now, the principle of that half was, if, if you don't understand, the principle of that half was, it's half portion to the full by the respect of the fact that you are caught a real girl and cheat of the wife. That's why in divorce they split that by half. It's so uncomfortable. Although some people just married to divorce, but the idea, the idea that, that the king had about this lady, yeah, was Esther entered the relationship as a submitted woman. And that's why I am, it is not right for a man to be right, it is not right, it is not right. But the moment you realize you have a justice to you, be afraid. Be very afraid. Pray the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, for the sake of this angel, it, the English, in fact, if you read the Greek, it says, no, Muruganda, Baganda, Yamba, Yambi, Yamarai, Bayan. It says, no, they are seeking you to help them. Help them. Have power in your head. Because if you don't listen, you will kill a certain person. That you carry a particular group. Yeah? That is correct communication. Have you been around women who are not truly public? It doesn't matter how to take it there. That's why the biggest number of people are living man. But they have this person near the story. You go through the story of many women. Okay. Start from your life and your neighbors and friends. Look at the most perfect girl. They are not submitted. They can't. You understand where I'm coming from. Because there is a place where they claim they hear God. I used to know the girl, she, she knows who God has appointed, but her life is sin. But for her she hears for other people's marriages and weddings. So go uri lire yiyo, eyo we terera uri lira balala, kuyambe. If you are immature, you will hate me. Fast here for your marriage. After hearing for your marriage, now enter Rachel's marriage and also hear for her. But you, you're fail to hear for your marriage. You're hearing for Pastor Isaac. You're hearing for... You, you understand? Don't hear. Don't hear for another man's marriage before you hear for you. That's the place where you think you hear God most. And then in the end, you corrupt a small statement of corruption. Just the corrupt wisdom comes out of the spirit of the prophet, which is actually a truth of why? Because of the help. Okay, let me give you a Look at the family first. The husband is the head of the house. Hmm? Look at look at the girls who were raised in family, where either their father was there, or who was less significant than their mother, or they never see the same. They have character issues. Oh. Okay. My sisters, by being raised by my father, they are 17, they can't set the man's head. Because the power over their head taught them a certain language. You understand? Look at people who either weren't with their fathers, or their fathers were insignificant, or their fathers weren't there. Or their fathers were there and they used to exchange. A woman can't exchange with her father and not fail in marriage. Did you saw Luca. You look at you you go back to you go back to family safety. Look at those cousins, those sisters, and all yourself. Those is daddy now. That's me. Daddy, you watch all of those women who usually fall to their fathers. They are not married. Or if they are married, they are not happy. Because they frustrated the power. Because that's the Father in Spirit. God gives you another chance to find fathers in the Spirit. And you disrespect them and you say, I'm going to get married, I swear. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Listen, you think you're going to disrespect Pastor Isaiah, your spiritual father, and respect your husband. Cannot happen. This even God will be unfair. No. Listen. Fathers who are not there, fathers who are less significant than the, the wife, in the places where mothers were more of influence than, than the father, or who they never saw at all, or who never had a relationship with their daughter, look at the way they are raised, majority of them. Now, it's not your fault, and I'm not blaming you for that, but this time, Pick a father. Pick a father. I'm telling you, even if you're all sick, it can be too small, but you need it. Because sometimes it's more than just father, it's how men think. You must know how men think. So that you don't waste your, your communication. Many people, that's why they're not married. Not these meetings of Simania. Because some of you, you know, you know, the Bible says there's a beauty, there's a beauty that, 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 that is falling. 
foolish thing, a foolish thing, a kind of deceiving gift. Some people look at themselves in the mirror and say, "Nae wa kwe kwe mola kwe." Kwarunzi wa mwana kwe. No kamala. Kare, you be hot alone. Because I was once young and I'm old, right? Now I have seen many women get married straight, but boba fumba. You understand? Big noses, big ears. They are getting married. Big short, many women. They are getting married. Mothers are still walking on the street. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, because you you think men see this outside. Listen, if 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 a man still sees the outside, he's lost. After using you, he'll move on. That's why many of you feel used because they saw your beauty and the guy got excited. After being with you, he got proper. He walked out. I'm helping you until the man sees you here. You'll never be brown here. I promise. You will never. You will never. Why? Listen. Because you define him. You define him. Anything that he sees in you should come. He won't allow. He won't allow. Listen. You are the bone of his bone. Singular of his brood. That is why many men say, "Don't marry them." Why are you not going to see? They are big chances. Unless wisdom of God. Hey, thank you. That's why the foolish kid. The Bible says, "Bring shame to the mother, not the father." So on your side. Now, if you're here and your transcripts are bad. Your U S C is bad. Your U C is bad. Better be this. <laughs> That's the only shortcut. He has been made our wisdom, our redemption, our sanctification. <laughs> like that. You can say in the world I wasn't wise, but in the spiritual things I was wise. Similar. If I produce a kid who's deep spiritual, I don't care whether chemistry is an issue. Let them be deep spiritual. They will survive. I know it. Why? Because that wisdom will teach them chemistry, will teach them physics, will fit. It will teach. It will teach them. Listen, you can't be anointed and you're not fed. There is even an anointing that doesn't feed you. Go back to your father. I want to conclude. I want to conclude. For the sake of the angels. Now, I cannot have raised you. Huh? Now, Miriam is married today. I want Miriam. I had two chats with Miriam. The first chat was in their father's house. I told her the wife was mad. The second time there was a group of girls. We took her for those men. What a bright shower! Bright or sour was one hour of preparing Miriam to be married. Now a spirit comes and tells me, "Miriam, young woman, Miriam, you see what I'm trying to say." But to prove that I raised the right one, yesterday on radio station, Miriam came back. Married woman left her home, husband stamped for her to come to school yesterday and just sit in the office in the in the studio and pray in tongues. I told her, "I'm proud." Now Derek can't say, "Ha!" You know, Mukadwa, he can't even think. He can't even think. You see, but a married woman had time to come and pray in tongues at the radio station. Single thing can't even pray in tongues. <laughs> married woman was in November blessing. Single things have a problem praying on Saturday. Why? Kitu wa wasa mama tuna kola tia e. Ah, I'm talking a lot. 
even my sermon. Okay, I'll continue tomorrow. You mean it's in the speed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might not be responsible of your past, but you can shut the future. If you're a woman here and you're not with your father, and be fished by the mother of God, if you're still alive, go call him now to get up the side and tell him that. You start to stop living under your own father. You will speak. You will speak. You remember my word. My word period. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the power in the household draws the card. Draws the card. That is why it's very hard to find a woman whose mother submitted to her and the father loved the woman. And that woman failed in life. Come on. That is why when you marry the scriptures where you find the blessings of your past. This is where we come from. This is where we come from. Get to your feet. Make it now, you're going to pray one. Just raise your hands and say, Lord, we thank you. Because we are humble. We are very humble in spirit. We are very humble in soul. Very humble in action. I decree and declare. I will not fail in much. I decree and declare. I will not fail in ministry. I decree and declare that I will not sit in the in the seat of the school. I will never be the anointed one. I will never backbite the anointed one. I will never scorn at the anointed one because I know it's an anointing. Even as a wife, it's an anointing to have a husband. And he's anointed to be my heart. I'll never disrespect him. I'll grow and I'll teach my daughter the same. So I'll be my master. In Jesus' name. Now, gentlemen, you say in the name of Jesus, I'm not abuse that submission. I'm not taken for granted. You know why I'm fixing your marriages now? That's that when you get there, you don't waste time. You are in nation, okay? I will not disrespect her. I will love her Christ as love the church. And regard her an equal heir to the church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.